Okay, how I got one? How I got one in the room? Did it already send out notification? Wow. That's double tough right there. That's what they're doing now. You're promoting my stuff now? <laughs> okay, well, go ahead then, Google. Put yourself there. Somebody's on like full time with some live. Let's see what we got here. Okay. I'll turn the red light on since we're in a sub now, right? Since we're checking out sub and turn on my comms. You know what I mean? Okay, people. Um, we're talking about mini spy subs. We're talking about these kind of mini spy subs right here that get towed up underneath another one. Okay. Sorry for the Russian there. I cannot translate that, but I can bring you what it is. Let's see what we got here. I'm trying to zoom a little bit. So now, that's what we got right there. And they were actually listening to undersea cables. And then there was a fire on board. What they want to say, the official story, and I'm going to put this up on the dash here so get a good look. It's towed with slings up under that type of sub. I'll, I'll describe that sub in a second. It's like a class three. That's how they tow it out there. So I'm going to move this out to, out to here. And we'll talk about this. About what's going on. Hope everybody's doing good. And uh, 14 people died on that sub. So, you know, I hate to hear that, but um, it's a dangerous thing. And they've got older, they've got older submarines. They've had some problems with their stuff because uh, basically, uh, that may be too bright. Basically, they're um, even the newer subs. They're putting older missiles on there. That's part of the problem. Um, some of their stuff's got that uh, kerosene torpedoes that are, you know, primed with uh, to give it extra oxygen, a little kick. They put a little peroxide in the mix, and that high, uh, highly volatile um, type of peroxide is uh, it. it it will leak if they're not maintained. Those are older um, missiles. I'll get into that in just a second here. I'm gonna turn the brightness down on this. So I hope everybody's doing good here. I'm just uh, bringing you a little bit of news and I've heard about it on different channels and nobody put what it was. So I said, okay, I'll put what it is. Now, a little bit of, um, little bit of backstory on it. And I'll read into it real quick. Um, let's see here if I can bring up my map let's see what we got here okay they towed it to Severomorsk which is about 20 three to 25 hours north of Russia, depending on, north of, I'm sorry, <laughs> north of Moscow, depending on Moscow, Russia, it's, uh, depending on traffic, they've got a road that's closed up there, it looks like, when you look it up on the map, and I found it on a couple of different sites I go to that show breaking stuff, um, 22 hours and 49 minutes, it's 1,878 kilo kilometers uh, north of Russia, so, um, I'm sorry, north of, I keep saying that, north of Moscow. So if you just look at it on just regular um, Google Maps here, okay, this is Moscow right here. This is Severomorsk. That's Finland, Sweden. Uh, I'm sorry, Sweden, Norway. You know, Estonia down here, Latvia. Okay, so this is Russia. So this is the town of Severomorsk. Of Sever let me let me get this right here. Hang on one second here. Severomorsk, if you wanted to look it up, okay? So, I, I wanna zoom in on this thing to show, really, there's a, that's where they towed it to after the fire was put out and all. It's my understanding that they can hold, and I get into the specs of it, for what I would have specs, everybody else, you know, it's just, a, it's their 
highest, newest class of secret spy uh, sub, but I got some intel on it. It holds about 20 people. They can put it in a sling and run it up under that other class three sub. This is, you understand that that's a port. Uh, it is an old Soviet base that's no longer used, but they brought it there because that was the closest place to bring it to. Okay, so it's likely this is the town of Severomorsk, but it's likely closer to this water's edge from there. This is going to be a little bit off, okay? So, and that's a different town. So, if they're saying Severomorsk, so they brought it through here, okay, through the Kola Bay from way up here. We're talking, I mean, it was in the Arctic Ocean, and what they were doing was they were listening in on our transmission of undersea cables. They want to say that they were doing research to see how deep the ocean floor was. We already know how deep the ocean floor is. We got maps of it everywhere. We don't need them to do that and they don't need to do that. They've got maps of it too. So check it out just to give you an idea. You don't know exactly how far. I mean it was towed out there in the first place. So being towed in is no big deal. Okay that's as far as I can go. Now check this out. So that's Moscow. That's Severomorsk. Okay that's how long it take to get from there to there. Now let's just zoom out a bit. That's Greenland. They could have been up in here. They were listening to undersea cables. Over here is the United States. So, there's undersea cables that go across. About here like that. They likely were around down in here listening to undersea cables. Okay, I'll give you another view in just a second here. And I'll get into some of the specs. But it's my understanding that it holds 20 people. And um, out of those 20, you got to understand there was a fire on board while they were doing the undersea work, while they were tapping our phone lines. Um, and uh, so the name of the sub that nobody knew, okay, but I've gone to some sites, I've seen some people in Russia that have put it out from what they put out from the paper there. Um, it's a Losharic AS-12 mini nuclear submarine. Now, if you remember the Kursk, K-U-R-S-K, look that one up, and I'll put links up into this. The Kursk blew up because it had an explosion on board. The explosion was caused when some of that propellant for the torpedo that, that fueled the kerosene to go faster, which was a hydrogen peroxide mixture that was, it was really volatile, that once it leaks, if it touches any kind of copper, it will uh, expand and, and get hot and catch fire. Um, it's called a chemical reaction. So, um, chemical fire. So that happened in that one and it actually exploded the, the torpedo because it went back to it like a fuse in a way. It exploded the, the torpedo um, that at that time they were using these older torpedoes. I'm going to turn this down. They were using these older torpedoes at the time on the Kursk um, that was... Um, they were nicknamed, um, uh, let's see here. I wrote that down. I want to say it was a fat girl or something like that. I was, I'm no lie. I need a better light. Let's get some light on the subject. That's part of the problem is can't read on my underwater light here. Okay. They nicknamed them, them the fat girl or fatty torpedoes. And really the technical number for that one is the 6576. I don't know if they had the 6576s on board this one. Um, I don't know what was on board this one. It being a little bit smaller than the sub that brings it out there, it may not have had anything. It could have just been a wiring issue, but this is their newest, latest super secret spy sub that I don't know about and you don't know about, but now you know about it. And uh, it's um, it's been towed to several more, but th this happened yesterday, but they're just now letting it out today. But they, uh, they lost some high ranking officers too. You know, and that's uh, they lost seven captains of first rank, seven captain first rank officers in the Russian Navy, and two of them had been awarded the Hero of Russia award. So these are some high uh, ranking officers that died while they were down there doing this thing. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know exactly what happened, but they. This is what's weird. 
okay, they reported to, Russia reported, or reportedly reported, to another, I want to say Norway, or another country, that they had an, expl that there was an explosion, maybe not on board, maybe outside of the vessel, maybe it got hit by another ship, I don't know, that, um, basically, that caused the fire and blew it up, and then they said that, uh, they were they fought the fire and they put it out themselves is my understanding and I, I guess it was towed back in so maybe because it can hold about 20 people on board maybe the 14 that died um, that the other ones were the ones that put it out because I don't think if they were down at depth that the other ship above them could put out a, f a fire inside of that you know submarine that's lower than them but they uh, they give them they, they put them they, they tow them out there with a sling uh, underneath the larger ship. So, let's see here. Because I had to take a couple of notes on this because some of this was pretty deep. Um, I'll do the best I can to get through all this intel and give it to you. Okay. First off, um, they, they can sling it under the underbelly of a modified Delta three ballistic submarine according to a open source intelligent analysis that that you know did an analysis on that the boat is a 2,000 ton boat in the first place so that would be some heavy duty towing you know strapping and slinging but a 2,000 ton boat I mean of course water helps but a 2,000 ton boat and it's it was made in 2003 this is um, this is their highest level of uh, super secret spy submarines, and they are designed. They they want to say the cover story is always they were underlaying, uh, laying down undersea cable, or they were inspecting or whatever the ocean floor, uh, what just to see if it's a floor or not, whatever. And they want to they want to say now that they were trying to measure the depth of the ocean at place. Sonar can measure the depth. You don't have to go down there and feel it. So they were down there likely listening in on transmissions on phone lines some type of an explosion happened either it was hit with something or it caught on fire on the inside if it's that small who knows if it had any defenses who knows if it even had any of those torpedoes and i wouldn't think that they would put those those are some big torpedoes that were on the kursk so uh they put it out they brought it up 14 people died including those um seven high seven high ranking officers two of them that got the that 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 award they were given by the way has to be given by the president it's my understanding it's, it's kind of like the i believe it's the highest the highest medal you can get so this was all by rbc russian news outlet atomic news put something about it earlier and you know just told that it happened and also i've got several links from several different channels that i look at I'm not going to, you know, rep them because I don't, I'm not subscribed to them, but I'll give you links. Um, and uh, it's really weird. They named this spy submarine. This is the weirdest part. Uh, the Losharik is named after a Soviet-era cartoon character, a toy horse made of balloons, if you believe that. <laughs> I don't, that's fine, whatever. It's, it's a weird name. It's I guess they endeared it. So a toy horse made of balloons, the Losharik, uh, that's what they named it after. So it's my understanding it will hold actually a, a crew of 25. And so 14 of them passed away and they were fighting the fire. Um, I'll put up also some links to the Kursk if you don't remember that one in 2000. And then, um, you know, they've had a problem with their submarines because the older ones, in, in the 1980s they had like um, 180 subs. And then when the Soviet Union fell, they were down to like 40. Then they built a new class of subs, which is like the, the Kursk. And the Kursk went under because it had older torpedoes on it that failed. And that one blew up and it actually blew into the, 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 they found out later that it blew into the sub and exploded and then set off at least four other torpedoes. Blew off the top half, front half of the ship. There was a total of, I want to say at that time, there was, I wrote it down actually, but it was, I want to say it was like 118 on board, but uh, then 20, let's see. Let me get this straight. Um, let's see. Yeah, it was 118 that wound up dying. But out of those 118, 23 of them were still alive at the back of the ship. 
and we went out there to help them and they wouldn't let us help but later they reported that they had these oxygen um uh scrubbing chemical you know canisters that they believe that were working off of potassium silver oxide water and oil don't mix with that well and then they had a fire and they died but they were in part of the ship and they do know they were alive up until you know quite a few days and 11 days is when they said they knew they were dead but we had people out there and they wound up they didn't want the u.s to to help but at the time truthfully to give them credit they fired like three top brass one because he wouldn't let the u.s near the waters another one because um th that they didn't report it to putin and the and the government and the other one for um for something else that he had to do with the, with the whole thing so as far as the may, maybe they would ask us for help now you know um maybe it's a different situation uh, but this one russia actually pulled up itself and towed it back just like they towed it out there in the first place i'm sure they got it to that dock and it's it's going to be in, it's investigated and um they said that this is what's so big about this putin canceled a a meeting a trip somewhere to go up there and to be checking it out and part of it is my understanding and um mike pence canceled something is what they're saying but i don't know that to be true they just they they told you know some people said that he wasn't leaving in the first place whatever some weird stuff's going on and also there was a meeting called by putin i believe of of i guess world leaders i, I don't know how I, I can't confirm that um so if that happened maybe he wanted to let them know you know hey you know that there was no loss of nuclear anything in the in the water or maybe just um maybe he thought someone else had something to do with it or whatever but the, oh that's right the one general who on the kursk said that he thought that american had blown it up that it was the navy uh, he was fired because that was not the case and so it wasn't the case anyways you know but um so maybe though maybe there won't be a a big uh what would you call it a world event out of this um but it's 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 big news it's a big thing and um so if anyone wants to say anything i'm just bringing this up because it, it is a big thing and it could it, things like this can escalate real fast um and you know especially when people would not having cool heads don't prevail sometimes um but let's see and i appreciate the like there so the the um the kursk was the seventh class by the way of submarines and that thing was huge it was like 505 feet by 60 feet it was the k141 this is the as12 this one would be its little cousin or something it's a little bitty thing that's towed up under it and i showed you the the picture there i'm going to watch a, a couple of uh reports on this and let them talk um because i think i went over everything but i will say this uh, that after even the Kursk uh, and the th the two admirals were fired and one deputy premier was fired. Um, the K-159 um, was being towed to a scrapyard and on August 30th, 2003, nine people died on that one. Um, and they said that, that was because of, you know, a mistake that shouldn't have been. Pro a lot of these are, are problems because they have older equipment on board that's not been maintained because they don't have the money to maintain it and but these people are just still you know hey let's do it you know getting out there on the on the ships and doing what they can and they're using the scrapyard as, as like a place to go get parts and that kind of stuff there's they're uh scavenging them you know uh, and then 20 died in 2008 when a firefighting system was accidentally activated on the nerpa nuclear powered sub uh that was undergoing trials in the pacific fleet um and those 20 people died and then there was there was actually there was a fire too in 2011 they had a problem they're having problems with subs for real so in 2011 a sub armed with long-range nuclear missiles caught fire while undergoing repairs in the murmansk uh region of russia and that was um you know a kind of dangerous situation there um so I'll, I'll find that video real quick and I'll play that, but um, the name of it is the Losharic. Uh, and um, I'm not thinking that that's a class of them and naming a bunch of them. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the actual one. 
and so that's why I put it in the title. So anybody wants to, uh, you know, have Intel on it, that's that's the truth of it. And um, I'm gonna find that video real quick. Hope everybody's doing good. You can make a comment if you want. Let's see here. Oh, strong silent type in the room. Let's see. Um, and there's undersea cables that that thing is designed to. I'm sure listen in on. They have. To, they don't even have to pull them up. They they can get close to them and they can listen in on uh, phone conversations. Um, let's go over to this video if I can find this other one. And uh, which one more time since I have it in that spot, I'll show exactly how it's slung under. It's slung under like this. That's not one sub with a bottom piece to it or a kitchen or something, you know, or an addition. Let's see. That is the actual sub under there that we're talking about. And um, let's see what we can do here. Because I had another video. Um, some of these are in Russian, and I'm just going to put the links up anyways. And um, this one... I, I did want to show and I'm not sure where they get their intel from but this was the, and this is all in Russian but it's actually translated so let's see what we can do here I'm not gonna play the sound now that may or may not be the mothership you see what I'm saying that is a nuclear sub but that is not uh, the sub that was carried under the underbelly because it has that uh, the, the way it's built you, you could you could not put that under another sub so metric measurements there was no measurements going on. anyways as the among the dead sailors this is where they they did actually uh talk about this here seven captain of rank one and two heroes of the atomic submarine type with 12 horsemen in the and see russia and some of this is bad um translation calling it a deep water apparatus. It's it's super secret. I wanted to get to the point where this shows the, the pictures. 60 meters. You see how small that is? So um, it's it's made of it's my understanding it's made of titanium. Um, they're showing this to to withstand pressure it's made like that. That's what it that's the inside of it. see the Soviet cartoon because of the sequence of seven balls enclosed by a streamlined hole. That's why it was named after the cartoon. <clears throat> so that's the picture. Espionage and sabotage. <laughs> see, at least they're being a nuclear reactor. Okay, see, at least they're being honest. That's what it's designed for is espionage. That's, yeah. So um, here's a Pentagon picture of it. That's the best they could do back then of it being next to a ship and they got it with uh you know satellite imagery so anyways um there's a full-on news report though that i wanted to show this was a european news source and so if you're interested in the story at all i can assure you that this is the best one if i can, if i can get this right let's see here that this would be the best news source for you um, let's go back here. That's AMTV did talk about it. He's a, he's a little bit, um, uh, what's the word? I, I don't know. Maybe a little alarmist about it. There you go. Um, and then let's see here. Euro news in English. This one, I'm pretty sure is the right one. And we'll watch it real quick. And then I'll change over the audio to it also. 
died after a fire broke out on a submersible vessel. Here's where we're going to go. Give me a half a second. I'll set this to the front. Negative two. Right rear. Go all the way to the front. And we'll listen up to this. Maybe this will work out. Oh, 39. Let's see. I can put... I can put it to the rear a little bit. I think. Let's rewind him and give him a chance to talk about this. This is Euro News. Because we have to get our news from Europe. Breaking news coming out of Moscow where 14 people have died after a fire broke out on a submersible vessel. Alex from our social media news desk has more on this. Alex? Alex is on pause. He went to circle. Well, Tokes, this is a piece of software called Live UA Map. It's used to map live news events as they happen around the globe. And you can see here two icons that have popped up, and that's using data from the Russian Ministry of Defense, confirming that this vessel has now been taken to Severomorsk, that is a Russian naval base. So what do we know about the fire that led to it being brought in there? Let's just bring you the facts. There We've we been told by the Russian authorities a fire broke out on board what they're describing as a deep sea research Vessel. They say it was conducting research on the seabed within Russian territorial waters. They say 14 submariners have died in this fire. The submarine being brought in now, as you saw there, to Severomorsk. But already this is prompting comparisons to the disaster of the Kursk, which was a Russian submarine. The comparisons now drawn with that, where that was a nuclear-powered submarine. In 2000, there was a terrible accident killing all the crew on board. At this stage, we do not know the exact nature, the detail of this specific submarine. But deep sea uh, disasters are something that uh, really is, um, I suppose you could say, a real concern for Russian people. A lot of memories of those. Let's bring you what Anne Ferris Rotten of the uh, uh, Washington of the Washington Post has said. Well, she's saying this will undoubtedly draw comparisons, not just to the course, but also to an accident in 2008. And all of this overall will cause a political headache, she's saying here, for Vladimir Putin at a time when his personal approval ratings are low, a disaster like this, 14 Russian submariners killed. There is a sense here that this will be a political headache for Russia's president. We'll, of course, bring you more on Euronews as and when we have it. Yeah, so that's what's going on there. I'm going to listen to some music and let y'all make comments, and I'm going to chill for a bit. And then... Uh, if I could think of anything else, I had a couple other things going on, but this this kind of took precedent over it, and um, seems like uh, seems like a lot of people are nervous about it. Um, being that, uh, I guess that was some kind of a world leader conference called, I guess, um, by Putin. So I'm not sure why. Um, maybe somebody else who has intel on that can look into that but um i will put up links on all these videos as, as soon as we get off this thing in a few minutes here and um i'm just gonna have a cigar and chill what i uh what i also heard though like i said was uh through another video and, and then another website I went to another website and read a whole bunch of stuff on it they um it's, it's my understanding that Russia notified, I think it was Norway, and said that there was actually an explosion that caused the fire. That it, that something uh, hit it or it blew up in some way that, I don't know if maybe they hit an old mine, maybe, who knows? Maybe they got into a fight with another ship, who knows? Um, and then Russia later recanted that it was something that hit it. So. Um, or said that they never said that in the first place is the way they said it. So um, that part wasn't confirmed. And it's it's some really weird stuff. But I think in the next week we're going to find out more about their super spy little mini subs that they sling up under submarines than we ever wanted to know. And um, hopefully nothing will escalate into anything else. Anybody want to say anything? Um, let's see. How missed it? Oh, well, you're fixing to get it again because nobody's gonna kick nobody out and everybody's welcome to stay but I got to go <laughs> so what we will do in a couple seconds I'll hit this and it'll be replayed but the bottom line the gist of it is that a super secret sub had an explosion either outboard or inboard either way and um, it caused a fire 
there were, I want to say there was about 20, 25 people on board. Some high ranking officers died. That's why it was a really big thing. And uh, I believe they were listening to the undersea cables because that's exactly what they do. Um, see if I can go back to that other video. I will play a little bit of this other one if I can find it. Um, that's agenda free TV. That's, uh, there's quite a few links on this, but you have to really, you have to know the name of the, of the ship to look for it. You have to, you know, you have to know everything that I put up there in the title to be able to find any of this stuff. Um, or you won't. So hold tight here. Let's see. Let's see, that's the Losharic. Uh, let's see. Your news English. This guy was, that was all Russian. You don't, you won't want to watch that. Um, young group, let's see. Called into urgent meeting. I will, um, I'll put this link up. I'm not going to play his stuff, but this, I'll put the link up to this video. And, um, let's see, four, three. Skivan. This is AMTV, and I'll add the I'll add this to this other playlist. Let's see if it'll let me look at the list. See this. Let's see. Yeah, several people are reporting. Yeah, but they're reporting on it, but they don't know all what I just said. But let's see, fluid situation. I don't expect the truth uh, ever really do. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, when you see what I put up, I showed you a map. I showed you where they towed it to. I've got until like nobody's business. I've got. I mean, I showed what the name of the ship was, what class it was, all of that. When you see what I put up, you yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this now as a video. I'll put up links to it and. Um, See, I was going to talk about the F-17, F-117, um, and uh, I will I will say this. Uh, if I can find this real quick, I wanted to put that up. Let's see, F-117. Um, nope, not going to find it. Um, really? I thought I saved that. Basically, we have an F-117 fighter. And they, out of, um, they were doing satellite recon over China. And evidently, China had an F-117 <laughs> that they took a picture of. And it's like, what's that? So, and then they're like, that's obviously an F-117. So, evidently, they are either using one to, uh, you know, they backward engineered it and built one. Or they, um have taken one and um and I'll, I'll find that real quick that's what i'll do i'll find it give me a second people let's see f117 china it could be a mock-up but then they hit it with what would have been radar and it should have had the same i mean it should have shown up and instead it had a subsection let's just play this a stealth us this this is just like this is um this is kind of bothersome. So I'll get the audio and I'll replay it and, and then I'll get off this thing. Because I did, I did want it. This is what I wanted to do. This is the whole reason I wanted to do my next live was for this. And they messed around and uh, had a sub catch on fire that I had, you know, wanted to bring up. Allison Hang on one second. I want you to see the whole thing. It's got a little battery too, but we will plug it up. As China becomes a global superpower, it guards its secrets closely. But even the tightest security is no match for the satellites watching our planet. Get the base right too. Military analyst Allison Puccioni trolls through reconnaissance images of China. 2010. In the industrial city of Luoyang, a disturbingly familiar shape catches her eye. Boom, there it was. An American F-117 Nighthawk in the middle of China. I couldn't believe my eyes. The F-117 Nighthawk is a highly advanced stealth attack aircraft. 
designed for the U.S. Air Force. A little bothersome, right? That the they would have one. The was a game changer in the terms we of still have some that's flying. It was the first example of stealth aircraft. It earned the nickname Goblin for its unusual radar evading shape. 59 of the silent killers went active They're saying they might block my stream, after but years of top secret research which drew on a theory pilot. We'll just hit the audio down so you understand people um, that uh, they they found the F117 outside of a warehouse in China that they know is used for military research and they I mean I'm just you know finding this and it was you know back then but they, they had one that was outside of a warehouse for that they know that China uses for research for military research and it was uh, they, they flew over there so okay well let's see if that's actually it that's it right there let's pause this that's what we want to look at okay so that's what they flew over and saw and it was the right shape the right height size dimension everything of the dimension was correct they knew what it was they're like that's that's our f-117 okay so when they flew over they said oh well they maybe they did a mock-up on it and they're going to you know test to see if you know what what the angles are or try to see if they can backwards engineer the the really you can't fly one aerodynamically it has to have those sensors in the front and computers have to actually mess with the ailerons to make it even stable or it won't be stable in flight they have a way to switch that off and it's not stable so anyways um so they they flew over it a second time and said, hey, let's hit that thing with some radar because it's supposed to be stealth, right? Um, when they did that, uh, it came back as barely showing anything on radar. That's a problem. That means that they've figured out the paint, the angles, the heat diff, you know, differences, all that stuff so that it doesn't show up. Um, so... Do they or don't they? Did they build a wooden mock-up? I mean, we have wooden mock-ups. Did they build a wooden mock-up of it? Or is that an actual F-117? So, um, anyways, uh, people, I'll leave that with you. I'll let you think about that. And uh, this is saying that they've detected uh, audio and whatever. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off this thing. I'll let, it, I'll let it ride like this. I'll talk about this F-117 in, in a different video. Um, and I'll get more in depth into that that was going to be this live but because of the sailors that died and uh you know it's sad too because we're not currently at a physical war with russia in any way even though they do all this spyless stuff and you know all the cyber war stuff going on um that those people have families and you know it's going to be rough because i mean when the curse went they didn't give them the intel and all that the, the one woman was yelling uh, at the at the admiral, I guess it was that was given the you know the talk on what was going on and all, and she said, you know, you gave us no hope, you gave us no information, nothing, and uh, then uh, of course a so-called nurse walks by her and they held her and then they gave her a shot through her coat that would basically make her sit down and and, and be immobilized. That's a very Russian thing to do. They just walk up and give you a shot of something, um, but uh, like a tranquilizer, you know. Um, but they were they're gonna be upset they're gonna be upset and this is like a touchy subject anyways you know so they were sailors they did pass doing their job and they're they're doing it with you know yeah it's a new sub but you don't know what kind of outdated equipment was on there evidently it was enough to have a fire and an explosion or whatever the cause of it was so with that I'm gonna get off this thing y'all stay safe I'm gonna get down the road enjoy the video if you hadn't seen it watch it from the first because no one knew the name of this sub no one showed a map of where they took it to no one understood that it's something that they sling under another belly of another you know class three uh nuclear sub and um i'm going to put up links also to the kursk and to some other stuff and so check out the links and then um it might be might be quite informative for you i'll put up all those links um so that's the name of the sub that's where it's at now where they took it to uh about the people that were on board the high class uh, high ranking officers that were seven of them were captain of first rank and two of them had been awarded the hero of russia award which is my understanding it's the highest award you can get in russia but it has to be given by the president of russia so y'all stay safe i'm gonna drop this with you and um you know hopefully they don't have a factory building those things right there you know but it's even at that 
is what it is. So stay safe. I'm out of here. Peace.